Okay, good evening everyone. First of all, I hope you had a blessed Sunday. Amazing to have you on the call. If you can hear me, if you can hear me, please do me a favor and uh, and just give me a hands up. Give me a hand up, a hand up, hand up if you can hear me. Give me, oh, awesome, thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much. Just before we get going properly, do me a favor, in the chat, in the chat, just quickly tell me where you're joining us from. Where in the world are you joining us from? There's a chat. Uh, let me go to the chat. I'm going to type in the chat. You should all see me. You should all see me typing now. So have a look in the chat. Just tell me where you're joining me from. I know we've got Pascal on from Canada. We've got Tom. Hey, Tom, good to see you from Jersey. Beautiful. You haven't been to Jersey. You should go. It's absolutely beautiful. Please type into the chat. Could you all, first of all, did you see my chat? Let me know if you just even type into the chat if you could see, if you could see me typing to you because it's helpful because I'm going to need it later. Okay, awesome. Everyone else, everyone else. Tom, you just type in there. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know if you can hear it. Patrick, type in there. Let me know if I can, if you can actually see my chat and chat back to me so that because we're going to need it a little bit later in the call. I'll show you why. Hey, Mark. Hey, Alexander. Hey, Amelia. Good to see you. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Andrea. Anthony. Bill Parker. Good to see you. Nice to have you on. Bob, good to have you on. We have over 300 docs have registered, so I'm not going to be able to read everyone's name, but it's amazing to have you all. Greg, good to have you on the call. Justin Petzer from South Africa, good to have you on the call. Justin Seaborn, good to have you on the call. Justin, if you just type in the chat there, let me know you're there. Justin Petzer, let me know you're there in the chat. Mark, good to see you. Who else do we have? We have, oh, there's loads of long list. Thomas Ronaldo, Simone, Sally, and Ruth. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Good to see you all. Nice to have you on the webinar. We're going to get going in just a moment. First, let me just say, I hope you've had a blessed Sunday. I always uh, start everything I do, whether I speak on stage or wherever I speak in the world. I always say, um, first of all, thank you so much for showing up. The Secret to Success is up. So let me share my screen and let us get going. Let us get going and start uh, running through this campaign with you guys. So let me see. Okay, awesome. So now I need, I need some assistance. So my team, my team that are on the call, if you just send me a WhatsApp or a message and just let me know if you can see that all correctly. And uh, I should be able to see your chat also. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So you can all see my screen. Listen, I'm going to run through tonight exactly how we generate between 50 and 100 new patient referrals and reactivations uh, every single, it's every single um, marketing event campaign, but how you can do that in the next 30 days without being a tech genius. Uh, my goals for the next 60 to 90 minutes is I'm going to give you everything I've got. I've also got, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm just going to share my campaigns with you. I'm going to show you some results. I'm going to show you some results of my students. And, um, and at the end, as, as promised, for those that stick around to the end, I've got a nice little gift for you. Let me run through what it is. So I'm going to be sharing with you this campaign. Just plug and paste there. If you look, all our scripts are in there all our emails that we have on there, all our texts. I'm just gonna, this is exact campaigns that we use. I'm gonna show you results in a moment. I'm just gonna share this with you and, and, and more. So stick around to the end and I'll just give you those, I'll just give you that swipe file so you guys can use it yourself. There's actually two swipe files I'm giving you. I'm also gonna give you a reactivation one. If you think that's pretty cool, give me a hands up so I can see if you enjoy that. Give me a hands up, give me a hands up. If you think that's pretty cool, if you want it. By the way, if you want the free swipe file, just copy and paste, give me a hands up. Let me see it. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Let me see your hands. Awesome. Peter, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. So nice. Cool. Guys, so that's me on the screen. That's my beautiful wife. That's my beautiful daughter, Emma. Um, I have, um, Gareth, good to see you. I also just had recently a, uh, a, a newborn baby boy. His name is Ben. He is three months old. Uh, he was actually born too much premature. So one month corrected. So those of you with kids on the call, I know that this is a precious, the United Kingdom or Europe, uh, this is a very precious time now, dinner time, all those type of things. So I'm even more appreciative of your time. You know, I look back at the time of my business career where I didn't have kids and I look back and I go, wow, I knew nothing, right? If you're on this call right now, you've got kids, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. So I just so appreciative of your time on this call. Uh, a little bit about me. So we, 
run one of the largest providers of chiropractic in the world. I uh, own and operate eight offices. We have 100 to 120 team members in a given day, eight offices. I have been involved in running offices in some way, shape, or form for the last eight uh, to 10 years, to eight to 10 years. I have a full-time marketing team that run my business. We also have a boutique agency that does done-for-you Facebook ads and Google ads and all those type of things for my clients. Uh, we see anywhere from three to three and a half thousand visits every single week in my business. We have an annual turnover in the business of seven million dollars every single year. As of that also changes, ten to eleven thousand new patients every single year. I've personally been on stage with Tia Becker and people like Jay Abraham, and uh, I just recently went on a tour with Robert Kiyosaki for three weeks. I was in London with him. I was in Romania with him. I was in Poland with him. Had many meals with him. Amazing experience. I also run a program called New Patient Avalanche. I also have a, a mastermind group with docs all around the world. We have a two day new patients, how to get new patients from uh, workshops and events in corporate companies and also in your business. We have loads of stuff. So that's a little bit about me. Here are some pictures of my team. The top pictures are about like associates and CAs. And we actually had Dr. Peter Morgan down to speak to my team. Uh, and then the bottom is some of my uh, back uh, backroom staff and my agency, and we just have a bit of fun. So we're uh, we like to have a bit of fun. As I say, rule number nine, as you guys are probably familiar with that. Rule number nine is don't take yourself too damn seriously. We do that in my in my boutique agency as well as as well as for my done for you clients. So we've had some amazing successes. I still have to pinch myself to this day when I think, do you know that? Do you know that? Uh, uh, the businesses on the planet worldwide that ever get to five million dollars per year annually are is one percent one percent of all businesses on the planet will ever get to five million dollars i still have to pinch myself when um when i look at it and trust me trust me even though it's been we just are so so blessed and we help so so many people and Financially, we've been so abundant and uh, helping people has been so abundant. It's been amazing, but it certainly wasn't always like that. Listen, I can remember there was times in this business specifically where I was trying to work out this marketing thing. I'm no different to you. Don't forget, I'm in the game. You know, I'm not, I'm not a fancy marketing agency. Now we do that, but it wasn't always like that. Um, I, I certainly started exactly where all of you are, trying to manage Working in the business, trying to manage life stresses, trying to manage running a business. Listen, when we come out, when we came out of chiropractic college, nobody taught us how to run a business. Nobody, run, nobody taught us how to run a business. You know, so I had to learn how to run businesses and how to deal with that team. Nobody ever taught us how to run a team. You know, um, one of the one of the things no one ever talks about in running a business is the complexity of running a business. Do you know that going from three to four staff members increases the complexity in your business by 300%, even though the team's only growing by 30%? Crazy, right? So I had all the same challenges as you. And even still today, $7 million worth of turnover, et cetera, there's an old saying that says every level has a new devil. Every level has a new devil. And I am no different. That's the same with me right now. Every level is a new devil. I've got many, many challenges. In, my, in the business, I'm right there with you. But I, so I learned how to create a marketing machine the hard way. And I remember there was a time where I realized that I had to learn he that can create people, he, he that can put people through the front door wins. The person that can repeatedly, consistently, and predictably drive new customers to the front door in a business gains a massive amount of power, gains a massive amount of confidence. You know, talk about providing for your family and creating abundance for those around you. Um, I don't know if you know this, but today chiropractors statistically have the highest default on student loans of any, if you will, quote unquote, medical profession in the United States. We have the highest default. It means we can't pay our fees. We can't pay our fees. We can't pay our, our student loans back. That is because where do we ever learn how to put people in the front door? How where do we ever learn how to run a business? You know, and even I see people sometimes have some fast success. You know, I always say, if you don't have structure in your business, it's coming to catch you. It's coming to catch you. It, it, it's very short-lived, the success, if you don't understand these. 
But what I will tell you is you get to cheat and get it the easy way. I'm going to teach you the stuff tonight. Here is the hard way. Now, I'm not going to teach you everything I know tonight because I've got to spend hours. My inner circle group, we meet three times a year for two days and we can't get through everything. And we have a weekly coaching call and they have um, we have a call and they, they direct access to my team, etc. And we still don't get through everything. So today I'm going to do my very best to give you the best that I've got. Right? So what I am going to need, though, before I continue is a couple of rules. I'm going to need some feedback for you guys. If you've ever run a webinar before, it's just me here all by my lonesome. So sometimes it, you never know if, if you're with me. So if I ask you to like give me a hands up, etc., just give me some feedback so I know you guys are with me. So, so far, who's, are you with me? Give me a hands up. Give me some feedback. Give me a little hands up. You're still there. Gregory, you there? Anthony, you there? Brian, you there? Thanks for joining us. Kim, you there? So I can, I'm looking at you. I'm waiting. Rachel. Give me a hands up. Nick, good to see you. Casey, good to see you. Over 250 docs now, over 300 registered. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Listen, what I might do is, I might even put my webcam, webcam on for a second. See if, can you guys see me? Can you see me for a second? Just see I'm here. I'm real. I'm here teaching with you guys late at night here in the United Kingdom. So I'm here with you. Nice to see you guys. Have an amazing evening. Just give me some feedback. I really appreciate that. Cool. So let's continue. So this is the hard way. This is the hard way. Many failed attempts. Many failed attempts. If you've ever had a failed attempt in, in your chiropractic business right now, you'll know what I mean. You'll know what I mean. You lose money. You go in, you, you decide, you know what, I don't want to learn this stuff and do it myself. I've been there. Yo-yo marketing. How many of you have ever had the experience of marketing yourself only when you need patience? Everything's good. You market yourself, you go hard, you put in effort, you start getting people through the front door. Then the great, then this classic conundrum happens in our business when you're an opera, when you're still the operator in the business, then you get become busy, you have less time to do marketing, and because you haven't got any structures, because you haven't got anybody in your business running the marketing campaigns for you, because you haven't got an accountability chart in place where you've got team members running the business with you, you then can't market anymore, and then you service those new patients, and then you have to start all over again. It's freaking exhausting. So here's what I need you guys to all write down now. Every single one of you should have a marketing seat in your business. Please write that down. You have to have a marketing seat in your business. Like, business is a panacea. It doesn't matter where you practice in the world. It doesn't matter what business it is. You have to have a marketing seat, right? I'll teach you some of this stuff. Those of you that continue with me in any way, shape, form, or come to my future webinars. You hope and pray. You give up or choose to ignore certain marketing avenues. Let's be honest. We all know right now there's things we should be doing, but just don't do it because we just choose to put our head in the sand like an ostrich because it's too freaking hard when we have to do everything. I've got a love-hate relationship with being the driver in my business. And when you know, uh, if, you, if, you if you've been frustrated by this, you'll understand that if you don't think about it, if you don't do it, it doesn't happen. But the most, the, the thing I can I stress to you right now, I say to all my docs in my inner circle group, the less you do as the chiropractor in the business, the more people you can help, the more abundance you'll have, the more less stress you'll have when it comes to finances. And by less, I mean the, le the more you rely on that business being run by a team, except for you, you know, you should, be, you should have a machine that's running in the background. Also, please write this down. Multiple sources of new patients. You have to have multiple sources of new patients. Because the reality is, at some point, something's going to happen to one of those sources. I don't care who you are. Even if you generate a ton of new patients through referrals, I had a good, uh, a good friend of mine who was wrongly, completely wrongly, accused of something, and he was front page of the newspaper because... And that they were, you know, they apologized and, you know, they, they, they made right with it. But the reality is the damage was done. And do you think that affected these referrals? You damn right it affected these referrals. So if you're not able to make sure that you have many fishing lines in the, in the, in the water, you're in big trouble. You become exhausted and you're not even starting this online Facebook thing. That's where I was once upon a time. And ultimately left feeling completely frustrated and completely overwhelmed. So here's the easy way that regularly brings us 500 to 600 new patient and referrals every single January, but most campaigns, but specifically January. Absolute killer. That's 50 to 100 per practice. It's insane. Our last Christmas campaign, 
This is, we're still in one right now. We say Christmas campaign is really our New Year campaign that started in Christmas. Um, and these are our results, 565 reactivations, 565, 535, 533 internal referrals, 311 new patients from Facebook. And we didn't die from stress. It was just a few emails that went out. I'll teach you this all now. So before we continue, raise your hand if you're still with me. Let me see you, let me see you. Sally, are you with me? Richard, are you with me? Luke, are you with me? Casey, good to see you. Tom, are you with me? Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Melinda, thanks for joining me. And thanks for joining me. Listen, here's the thing. Just give me a hands up whenever I say that so I can see you guys with me. I'm just about to give you a lot of information. Thanks, Richard. Uh, I'm just about to give you guys a lot of information. Here's what I want to be clear on now is you are going to feel like you are drinking um, water from a fire hose. Often it's just one thing from this entire webinar. Remember, I'm going to stick around till the end. I'm going to give you a lot of swipe files, which should help you. Uh, all I would love you to do is send me a message when it works and say like, that was awesome. But just bear with me now and just write down what you can, okay? If this is the first type of um, um, marketing type webinar you've been on, remember that I, you have to show up to many of these many times to really get nuggets here and there. So bear with me. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So first of all, let me teach you this. Why a holiday campaign? Essentially, when I talk about our New Year, New Year campaign, I'm just talking about something called event-based marketing. Please write that down. This is just an, another form of event-based marketing or a holiday or vacation campaign, right? So why a holiday campaign and what is it? Why a holiday campaign and what is it? First of all, it, it's event marketing. And event marketing is just leverage of the fact that there is already hype in the general marketplace. Meaning, 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 meaning is that other people are doing it. Other people are talking about it. Other people are already advertising in the marketplace, which gives you a lot basically gives you a big excuse to do the same. Everybody does it. When do Easter eggs come out? I mean, uh, I, when, do, when does Christmas decorations and things like that come out? I mean, it's like October. And the Easter, Easter stuff is already started coming out some time. It's ridiculous. But the reality of it is, is that if they do it, when you talk about retail and places like that, do you know, do you know that gyms right now, healthcare, gyms do 90% of their uh, up to 90% of their membership new subscriptions in January, right? Which is if you're not doing something in January and in healthcare, you're just crazy. You're just crazy. Anything, just a voucher, a coupon, put a poster on the wall. Literally everything, anything you can do, you've got to do something in January. You lose, you lose so much momentum if you don't do that. It's a great justification to do it. He has critical points. Write this down. Always has a start date and as an, as an end date. And in some way, shape, or form, human beings just need, need to have some type of end date, right? So start date and end date. I'll tell you what has changed for us, guys, is over the years of doing campaigns, what I have found is a, a marketing campaign like this is directly proportionate to the amount of energy you put, on, you put into this campaign on the ground. So the failure of a the failure of a uh, a seasonal campaign is usually and always got to do with poor follow through, poor commitment, poor measurement, and poor buy in from the team. It takes a whole team to do it. So one thing I've learned, this is a little tip for you guys, is when you start a campaign, uh, the short we used to do say like month campaigns. Now except for January, actually, because it's such a bump, bump of one for us, we will normally do the shorter the campaign, the better. So, for instance, Easter will just be a week. Valentine's will just be really, really short. Be a week, Valentine's. So, so everyone's all in for that week, and that way you can maintain the energy. It's tough to maintain the energy of the team for longer than that. I don't know if you guys can relate to that, but that's kind of my experience with it. Okay? This, uh, that's why I brought this up. It can run for an entire month, not a day. It's not just Valentine's. It's Valentine's week, right? It's New Year's, it's January, it's the whole month. It is Halloween. Halloween, we run for at least a week to two weeks. So it's not just the day. Make sure you leverage that for the whole week, for the whole week. A very legitimate reason to offer something. And there is a never-ending list of holidays to market. Those of you that are struggling, here's another little tip for you. If you're not, if you're struggling with subject lines for your emails, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna see if I can get this up here. I took it out of my presentation, but I can see if I can add it in back in for you. Just to, yeah, you go, just to give you guys a, 
uh, just to give you an idea here. Yeah. So let me show you something. Those of you that are struggling with, um, with emails, uh, subject lines, and what to write about, there's a little tip for you. If you go to any website and you type in national holidays, you will get a national holiday of, for every single day of the year. Have a look at this. This is just in February. Purification day. Created. You'll not believe that this S stuff exists, right? Lame Duck Day, or Charles Dickens Day, Toothache Day, Umbrella Day. You can have, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. But this gives you great content to talk to your, to your um, tribe or your customer list or your patient list, whatever it is. This is a huge tip that I was once given. It's helped me so much. Every time I'm struggling with either an email to write or subject to write, uh, it is a massive thing for me just to click on and see what national holiday it is. And I can always say, you can always start the email like this. I promise you it's going to get read. You know, um, happy, let's have a look, let's have a look. Happy lame duck day. This is how that email will go. Hey, listen, uh, I'm just reaching out. I knew it was lame duck day. And I just wanted to say to you, please don't be a lame duck. We know that people who, who don't look after their health are challenged. And I want to make sure that you're not in the same boat. So please don't end up as a lame duck. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Click on the link to book your appointment or click on the button. You guys can thank me later. I'll guarantee you if you write that exact email on the February the 6th, that exact email on February the 6th, I guarantee you'll get reactivations and new patients. How's that? And, 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 and if you don't, I'll eat my foot. So, so literally, you can write that exact email, send it to your list, and I'll guarantee you get other reactivations or new patients. Here's the big six that we use. Please write these down. Number one, always do something in Christmas. New Year, New You, MOT, it doesn't matter. In the United Kingdom, we have something called the MOT, which is looking after your car, for instance. So people understand that, that, that type of um, verbiage. So we do every single year. I can't tell you how important this is. Guys, the reason I'm doing this, this, this webinar right now is so you can still jump in the bandwagon. You are, this is a new year, new year campaign. You guys can kill it. You're going to get my swipe files. You can do that. I promise you're going to get new patients. You can also, we always do a Valentine's. We always do an Easter campaign. We always do some type of summer campaign. Thanksgiving's a big one too. We did it. We killed our royal campaign, royal wedding campaign when that was on. And those of you in Canada, you're stealing our royals, by the way. Uh, back to school campaign. We always do a back to school campaign. And then we always do some type of Halloween campaign. That's ours. That's our big six. Use them as you like. Now, here's my experience. Again, we used to do like longer campaigns. The shorter, more impactful you can make the campaign, the better. And here's a few key points. So if you're going to do a campaign, please write these down. You should definitely always have these three in every single successful campaign. I know, I, please write them down because I know that you're gonna get them and I know you're gonna run through the campaign and when you, are, when you do a checklist, you're, gonna, you're not gonna do it unless you, or, this, still to this day, I, I've done hundreds of these campaigns now. My team run it, we still go, do we have, number one, a referral element, write that down. You must have a referral element. Um, number two. <clears throat> You must have a reactivation element. Okay, write that down. And number three, you, you must have some type of new patient generation element. We do Facebook. Okay, why do I say do three elements in one campaign? Because one thing I've continued to learn in business, in property actually, I'm a property investor too, in, um, in with it, Yes, yes, yes. We've all got the same amount of time in every day. I'll never forget sitting with a very successful gentleman who was building a hotel in Singapore. We're talking like five, you know, a massive five hundred million, you know, dollar project, whatever it was. And I never forget saying to him, "Wow, Richard, Richard, that's really impressive. And um, that must take a lot of work." And he said to me this line, I'll never forget. And the line was, "Big projects, small projects, same work." And if you're going to do a campaign, don't limp in. Do all three. Go big. You're going to go big for a week. Because the combined energy of the whole thing is what makes it successful. So you must have a referral element. You must have a reactivation element. And you must have some type of new patient generation uh, activity. So let me go through them with you. Number one. Number one. Thou shalt have a referral element and incentive. So here's the thing about that. 
He has the secrets. Let me go back to that point. He must have a referral element and incentive. So here's my lesson with it. I have done so many referral campaigns. I literally couldn't even begin to remember how many I've done, right? And um, my lesson is this. The, 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 the latter half of that sentence, first of all, you must have a referral element. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what business uh, world you're in, the number one thing that nothing pisses me off more than hearing a, a coach off the coach saying, if you want to get referrals, just ask. Well, it's not that easy, right? You have to ask in the right way. I'm going to teach you how to do that in a moment. It's called in, to create, uh, create a create permission and something called inbound marketing. Next, you always want to have some type of incentive. Now, I'm going to caveat here. Depending where you're listening to me from in the world, every single legislation body has different rules on this. So let me let me have a clarif clarify that in the next in the next few points. Next. When it comes to, to generating uh, referrals, number one, you have to ask correctly. Number two, you have to have both a client and a team incentive. And number three, measure, measure, measure. So let's run through this. First of all, ask correctly. So as you guys know, you've always heard people say, hey, just ask, just ask, just ask. Listen, I am so tired of people saying that to me. How do you just ask for a referral? Well, here's the magic line. Here's the magic line. I literally had this, and there was one campaign when we, I've kind of stumbled onto this by mistake, right? But at one point, it worked so well that if I just got my team to say this, specifically at the front desk, it would double our referrals. Double. I literally had the following sentence that I'm about to say right now, laminated at the front desk on the computer just so they, it was right there in, in front of them. And the sentence is this. If you simply ask every single person in your diary tomorrow, this question, I will guarantee you that you are going to get a referral. This is the sentence. The sentence is this. Please write down. Hey, blank name. Have you heard about our dot 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 special? So let me put, let me give you more context for that. Hey, Mr. Smith, nice to see you. I just want to make sure, has somebody told you about our Halloween special we got on this week? They're going to look, you, look at you blankly. They're going to say, what do you think they're going to say? Yes or no? They're going to say, no, of course they're going to say no. And once they've said no, you get an opportunity to ask or tell them about it rather. If that's all you did tomorrow. Now, if you're a, if you're, if you're a doc listening, I know, I, can, I know some of the names of this course. I know we've got um, some CAs, practice managers also listening. Docs, he has a great line. Please write this down. You just you want to leverage. People often listen way more to what you say in front of them or than what you say to them. So a great line at the table is, hey, I should make sure. Did the front desk tell you about our Thanksgiving Bow and Give a Free special? Or did the, did, the, did the front desk tell you about our, um, our bring a family member for free special this week? No. And they go, great. And you walk into the front desk and then you will do a handover to the front desk and make sure you speak to the CA and say, hey, Mary, can you please sort out Jim here? Um, he hadn't heard about the, this week's special. Let's get, him, let's get him all sorted with that and do the handover. Give me a hand up now if you get that and you'll try that this week. Give me a hand up. Give me a hand up. You think that? Honestly, I promise you right now, give me a hand up if you're with me, if you're with me, if you're with me, if you're with me, Eric, good to see you. Are you still with me? Brian, you with me? Greg, you with me? Alex, you with me? Andrea, you with me? Alex, Jan, you with me? Rachel, Richard, Luke, you with me? Good job. Nick, good job, good job, good job. Give me a hands up. So number one thing when it comes to finding or getting a referral, listen, there are many cues before that. And some of the things I teach in New Patient Avalanche is the environment you create. I'm not talking about, there's so, there's so many parts still to teach when it comes to referrals, right? Obviously, it goes without saying that the thing that you provide needs to be world class. It goes without saying that the environment that you created prior to asking for the referral, uh, statistically, they show that in some way, shape, or form, you need to have seeded something at least seven times. So are you doing a tour, if you will, where you show them that thank you for referral board and and are they seeing that those cues when they walk into the office, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So those, there's so much more to teach around this. And there's a seven step protocol to doing this repeatedly. Are you referring to it? And here's another little tip. Okay, I wasn't gonna touch on this now, but here's a little advanced tip. 
Okay, right. Whenever we get a new, whenever we get a new patient who um, pays for an appointment and before they come in, they get a welcome pack in the post. Now, think about the welcome pack in the post. Why is it there? Number one thing it's there for is to help generate social proof. So we'll have celebrity testimonials in that pack. Yes, in the post, snail mail, print. Listen, I always, I always laugh at people who, uh, who say, wow, Ryan, that costs you a lot of money. Are you mad? Think about like just a dollar for someone who's potentially going to be with you for a lifetime. It's tiny amounts. If you're not sending right now something in the post prior to someone coming in, trust me, it's a lot harder for my business across eight sites. I don't know if you guys saw the photo of me with all the, the, the stack. Please make sure you do it. There's all sorts of things. And you should all be published authors, by the way, because you should definitely, especially if you uh, don't have an associate-based practice, you should definitely be making sure that you leverage authority. And uh, all you're trying to do is increase social proof and, and or authority before they walk in the door. So you can send them something called the shock and awe package, something we teach in your patient avalanche, where you build that authority. But I digress. Within that welcome pack, you also want to have seeds in there that say, I was referred, that mention celebrities, et cetera, et cetera. So by the time they walk in, it's a completely different conversation. Many people are talking about you know, day one, day two, and conversion classes and sales classes. Well, you know, we don't have too much of a problem with that, especially with my inner circle members, because it's a completely different conversation by the time by the time they walk in if you've done your marketing properly and you've been omnipresent you know some of my agency clients we do all the facebook ads for them so by the time someone walks in they've already been watching them for sometimes three four five six months to a year in videos etc online so it's just such a different conversation you can't but have double the the conversions as everyone else so that's the first one number two you must have both a client and a team incentive where possible I'm going to caveat that. So let me talk about a client's incentive, how I stumbled across this. This was about a mistake as well. I stumbled across this completely by mistake. So we've been doing, we've been doing um, referral campaigns for a while. And uh, one year, we had a, a, had a, there's a massage therapy school here in London. And they got hold of me and they said, look, we're looking for, um, we're looking for hours for our students they need they need they need hours for our students and they need somewhere to provide these and i, I you know my 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 knee-jerk reaction which was immediately to say well, look i haven't got any space in my offices it's not really what we do so i can't help you and i put down the phone and i and, and we were just talking about our valentine special now valentine's and a, and a massage go hand in hand right so I had this brainwave and straight away what I did was I was like, wow, all these hours, we could probably provide the service. I got back on the phone with the person and what I found was if I ran a referral campaign and offered an incentive for both the referrer and the referee, the results went through the roof. Now, do we do that every single time? You've got to be careful, right? So it, 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 and I, do, I do genuinely mean this. This is the honest truth is the campaign went too well. Meaning we had so, we got so many referrals. It was insane. It was absolutely insane. But it blocked our diaries for a lot of the other sources because I have multiple sources of new patients. How many would love to have that problem that you're like, oh man, I can't do that again because it works too well. Uh, give me a hand up. Pretty cool, right? That's the problem we had. Where it's like, whoa, I need to slow that down. Now, next, that's a client incentive. Does a client incentive help? Totally it helps. Okay, golden rule though, we don't, give, we don't give the adjustments away for free as an incentive. We don't ever do that, right? Also, when it comes to, to, to campaigns, there is, by the way, all the results you see on me on Facebook, wherever, all my results, when I, when I generate new patients from online, we don't do free, we don't do free examinations online except for one time of the year. And the only time of the year that we do do that, we've been through the process of free exams online, and as you guys know, there's, uh, there's pros and cons to everything, but certainly in January is the only time we break that rule for certain campaigns. So I would highly recommend, especially for a referral campaign, if you're ever going to do a massively reduced campaign or a, even a like get your family check for free, it's in Jan. It's a one-time thing. But definitely play around with it in Jan because it just helps your cause so much. So let's talk about the team incentive. Always have a team incentive. Right, so you've got to keep your results from this year's campaign or last year's campaign so you can at least have a, a, a benchmark to aim for next year. So human beings are just like that, right? If you do not, if you're not measuring something in some way, shape, or form, and some of your team may not like it, I don't care. It's just business. I don't like it either. 
But I'll tell you this, if you're part of Weight Watchers, the first thing you do when they walk into Weight Watchers is what? They measure you. That's it, the first thing you do. So you have to measure what you're looking to achieve, right? So we'll often set the team an incentive and we like experiential incentives. We've tried all sorts of incentives. We've tried cash. We've sent uh, teams to Ibiza. Many times we have, um, for smaller campaigns like this, done a night out in London for theater and dinner. If we, if we match last year's campaign or beat last year's campaign, et cetera. But always, and, and I know you're gonna listen to me now, and some of you are going to ignore me, and some of you are going to forget, and some of you are going to look back at campaigns we had incentives. Always have, even if it's a fun campaign for, uh, we have a mission star restaurant down the road. So one of the sister restaurants, that was one of our prizes, is once you, once you hit that campaign, we take it all out to um, that restaurant by Heston Bloomingthorpe. Some of you might know him. Always have a incentive, right? If possible, have a client and a team incentive, so everyone knows what, they, what they're aiming for. Next, measure, measure, measure. So you should all have what uh, you should all have, if you will, an equivalent of a war room in your practice, and there should be a whiteboard somewhere, and you should be updating it. Here's the problem with people that measure things on a spreadsheet or or a um, or or some type, you know, or Excel or whatever it is. The problem is that's hidden away. The only reason people get results when it comes to measuring is because they can see it. Now there's a famous story. Listen up, the famous story. Some of you may have heard it. Heard it. Um, about Henry Ford. Henry Ford walked into his factory and he asked his morning shift how many cars they had created that morning. And let's say it was five. And he wrote on the entrance floor to the warehouse, he wrote a big five. So when the afternoon shift walked in, they walked over the big five that was written in chalk and they said, what is this? And obviously he mentioned that the morning shift done five. What do you guys think that the evening shift produced? Six, right? He wrote a big six on the floor. Then, and so on, and so on, and so on. The AM shift then walked in and saw they had beaten them. So then the next, that shift, they beat them by two or three. That's just human nature. If you're not measuring in some way, shape, you want any, please, I truly, truly, truly mean this. If you want anything in your business to improve, in your practice to improve, you have to measure it. Let me give you an example. Um, we, 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 we spend all this money on marketing, marketing training, Facebook ads, etc. But how many of you on this call right now know what your answer rate on your telephones are at the front desk? Yep, that's right. You need to know on a, week, on a weekly basis, I know exactly in my business what percentage phone calls did we miss last week. And I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine about $1,000 to $2,000 burning in front of your eyes every single time you miss a phone call. Now, obviously, we can't prove that that's the case. But hey, do you think that all of us on this call have lost money and lost an opportunity to help someone by not answering the phone? The answer is damn freaking right. But if you want to improve, you have to know the stats on a weekly basis. So you have to make sure your, your computer system or telephone system can do that. Some of you listening to this webinar, just that one tip is worth double figures for you. <clears throat> just that one tip. That just there, that's all, that's all you ever get from me, just measuring your incoming calls. It's gonna improve and some, for some of you, you're gonna grow your business ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 just from that one tip. I promise you, how do I know? Because I've had one of my new circle members grew his business. He swears that's the only thing he introduced and he grew by $90,000, more than $90,000 for his pounds in a, in a year, just by that. So, things I've just taught you, simple, very achievable. He has someone who, who came onto my last webinar Right, same strategy I taught in that one. Okay, 13 referrals within a week of learning just this. Final numbers are in from the Valentine's promo, 13 new patients just from a simple internal promo. Some of those have already committed to 12 visits, the gift that keeps on giving. The stuff freaking works. If you're with me and you think you can do this tomorrow, and you're gonna, all you're gonna do is ask someone, hey, have you heard about our new year special, or our new year thing, or our new year, new you campaign? Whatever it is, you can do this. Give me a hands up if you think you guys can do that tomorrow. Give me a hands up, give me a hands up. Michael, can you, Lever, Jason, Kirk, Eric, Andrew Robson. I'm just going through the list. Guys, we've got loads, we have over 300 docs register. It's Peter Townsend, Howard, Amelia, Diane, good to see you guys. So, helpful so far. Next part is thou shalt always have a reactivation element. This is probably the thing I love the most. And the reason I love it the most is that one of the biggest sins we have or commit in our practices 
listen, marketing is amazing. It's changed my life. Generating new customers has changed my life. It is the thing that makes my business worth millions upon millions. And regularly people come to, to me in some way, shape or form and ask about our business and how we do it. And, but however, the thing that's really been a game changer for us is that most people spend most of their time generating new customers and they completely forget about the customers that no longer do business with them, right? You have to understand that, a react, that it's 10, eight to 10 times more expensive to generate new customers than it is to reactivate, and, to reactivate an old one. Therefore, before we talk about reactivations, you have to understand this. This is why studies, or studies show us that the number one reason that clients in any business don't come back after they have stopped using your service is what? Now, you're watching this right now. Most of you on this call thinking, well, Mr. Smith doesn't, wasn't getting better, or Mr. Smith doesn't like me, or Mr. Smith, whatever, didn't come anymore because of a million other reasons. Most of the time, you're way too hard on yourself. Here, this, here is the fact, statistically proven, that in any business, the number one reason that people do not come back to use your service is they are simply embarrassed. That's why. Now, if, you, if you're on this call right now and this has ever happened to you, uh, you'll be able to relate to this. Uh, I don't have this problem, uh, as some of you who saw, I put my webinar thing on again so you can see. I don't have this problem, I don't know if you guys can see me, is because uh, there's no hair, yeah? But how many of you ever, let's say you've been to the, you go to the hairdresser and uh, last minute you cancel your hairdresser appointment or you don't cancel your hairdresser appointment, you just don't pitch. You don't pitch the hairdresser appointment. And that day you go to the mall and there you see that same hairdresser that you canceled, you didn't even pitch. You will run a mile as opposed to cross paths with that hairdresser because you're so freaking embarrassed. That's exactly what happens in your business. Right now there are people that are not getting adjusted by you because they stop coming for care after you, Mr. Doctor, recommended X, Y, or Z, and they know they have to follow through with that 100%, and they think that you're angry with them, they think that you're cross with them, they think that you don't want them back in there. So, crucially, the more you communicate to the list, the more they are desensitized to the fact that actually you're not, you're not set to them. In fact, the more you, personal stuff you're able to send them, hand it to notes, reach it out, please write this down, write this website down. Use loom.com, www.useloom.com. Send them a video. We use the, this has just been a game changer for me. Send them a video. I'm not great at uh, uh, typing, it takes me ages. So send them a video quickly just to check on them. It's a plug into Chrome, it's a video you can send by email. It's freaking awesome. Now, you should also be doing that for anyone that registered for a new your new patient exam. Send them a personal. Now, I know this takes work. But if you want to up these things, send them a personal use Loom video. Those of you doing in-house workshops, you should absolutely be doing this. We're a two-day boot camp on this. People kill it with this. You should be sending everyone that registers a use Loom video prior to coming also. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I hope it's helpful. We, our, our, our show rates went through the roof when we did this. So let me continue. Here's the three secrets for an email reactivation. So first, I say email because you'll see it's not just email. First of all, you have to have a CRM. I can't tell you how many businesses I've worked with. My inner circle group, hundreds, you know, hundreds, I've worked with hundreds of docs from around the world. And how many times, like I jump on the call with them and they don't have a customer relations management or emails, um, an email system. Most of the time, well, let me run through the whole list. Next, you don't just send an email to the entire email base. You also want to make sure you do something called list segmentation. Please write that down. And secret number three, always, 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 always multi-step, multimedia. Never, ever write this down. Never one and done. Never, ever one and done. You will just, right now, you have just become experts in marketing. If you simply just do that, one, that number three, if you just do number three, you'll beat everyone. This is, uh, this is the only reason we kick everyone's ass is because we just do number three in, in, in bucket loads. Never one and done. Always multi-step, multimedia. Let me run through the three points. First of all, you must have a CRM. Infusionsoft or MailChimp or Aweber or Drip or Constant Contact, many more. Your booking system normally isn't sufficient enough. Okay, normally it's not sufficient enough. Now there are some great stuff out there. I'm just gonna say normally it isn't sufficient enough. It's fantastic if you have a operating system at the front desk that has something called an API into Infusionsoft. We use Infusionsoft. Let me show you what a campaign looks like. Have a look at that guys. This is actually my real campaign. I'm up, like I'm in the game. And 
my done for you clients, my agency clients, we literally just do the stuff for them at one level, okay? But I teach, I teach you everything anyway in my inner circle, my new patient avalanche. But you see, have a look at how robust this campaign is. So we have at the top here, I hope you can see my mouse. If you can see my mouse, I just want to see, I should make sure you can see my mouse on the screen. So Vanessa or Andrew Robson or Richard Power or Richard Andrew Robson, would you just, or Gareth, would you just give me a hands up if you can see my, my mouse on the screen? Ah, oh, thanks, Gareth. Okay, awesome, awesome. So have a look. So these are a series of emails that go out. Boom, 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 boom. You can see the dates on there. Guys, listen, if you stick around to the end, I'll just, I'll just give you the replay for this so you guys can model this. Uh, email, email, email. Now, here's the thing. There is also, there's also, I'm jumping ahead of myself here, but there's also letters that are going out and there's texts that are going out and there's phone calls happening. That's what I mean, multimedia. Now, have a look at the bottom. This is a different side of the camp. Every single one of these, Okay, it begin reactivation, new lead clients. For instance, every single, look at the bottom here, new, uh, new lead booking sequence, which means within the email, write this down, always have a button in the email they can click on, right? It's our, our, our opt-in rate went through the roof. It's like, have you ever heard of the saying, curiosity killed the cat? They just can't help themselves. They just can't help themselves. The, the, by the way, the button doesn't even have to go anywhere. So those of you that don't have operating systems that you can book online, it doesn't matter. The button can still say book now. And then a thank you page comes up and goes, one of my team will get in touch if you don't have that option, right? We haven't had that option for one of our systems. We've got across eight sites, et cetera. But those of you who do, amazing. You're going to get new clients straight away. But we just have a thank you page and we get in touch with them. So just to show you how robust this is and how much we teach this stuff is once someone enters that sequence, if I, click, if I clicked on this, it would have another whole sequence like this, right? Call back, and if, if, if I didn't, for instance, if they booked, yes, I want to come for an appointment, but I didn't get hold of them on the phone, we have a callback sequence, boom. And then if that doesn't work, we've got a not booked sequence, okay? When I, if I clicked on that, another whole campaign would come up like that. We have a text sequence, and we have another text sequence for follow. How many of you guys think that's pretty cool, right? Guys, is this helpful? Is this helpful to see this stuff? Give me a hands up if this is helpful. Is this helpful? Thanks, Amelia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Michael, Emily, Emily, Peter Townsend. Awesome. This is help. This is this is just how we run our business, right? I'm in the game. You just get to get. You just get to, those main circle. We just get everything we give. We we do to run our business. Next, number two, number two, list segmentation. Uh, please understand this when I say list segmentation. If I ask someone you know, had, did, did it work or whatever? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what did you do? And they're like, oh, we just sent an email to everyone list. I'm like, well, that sucks because not everyone, there's three, I'm going to have to put my camera on here for a second. So there are, have a, uh, guys, you're going to have to bear with me. We're going to go a bit longer than I thought, but if you can see me, have a look. There are three things when it comes to any marketing campaign. We have message, we have markets, we have media. We have message, market, media, right? The message changes according to the market. For instance, if someone has been with you for a long time, your message to a client that spent over $2,000 or been a loyal client of you for a long time is completely different for someone who decided not to take up care at all. That's what I mean. The messaging is different. The email that goes out to people who have spent a lot of money with you or loyal clients is completely different message to the email that should go out to people who decide never to take up care. Should they both be getting emails? Totally, they should be going both getting emails or not but they certainly should be, should be the same mixed message, right? You've even got a difference between an email that goes out to a loyal client who's still under care and a loyal client who's no longer under care. They've been a loyal client for years, but no longer under care. That's different messaging, right? So we've got the messaging changes to the market, but not only that, someone that spent over $2,000 with you, you can totally justify and you should justify the media changes. So should you send letters, should you send um, some uh, gifts in the post of their birthday and they spent $10,000 with dignity for years and they're long. Yeah, of course you should. But you see how even the media changes. Now, if someone came to a day one, day two, and let's say they decided not to take up care, you may not want to send them something in their post because they're not as committed as some of your other clients. You guys understand, yes? I hope this is helpful. So that's what we talk about message market media. Uh, okay, great. So stay with me here. So lists, not all lists are made the same. So let me give you an example. If we're doing a, a reactivation campaign, we may segment the list something like this. Please write this down. 
Well, first of all, there's three, there's three broad groups of any list. So you sit down, you're gonna do your campaign, you're gonna decide what are we gonna do for our active clients, if anything. I, probably the biggest sin we make in all our businesses, none of us do enough for them. If you have someone that's trusted you, their care, etc. Like, I am embarrassed, I'm embarrassed. You know, there's someone, there's, um, when I was doing statistics in my business, I'll never forget, you know, when I was looking at this, one of our clients, our most loyal client, who's been with us for years, has spent, uh, him and his entire family been coming to our practices for well over 10 years. And between all his family members, he's such a, a chiropractic advocate and he's a wonderful human being. And they've all spent over 30,000 pounds. So that's probably close to $40,000 in the last 10 years with me and my team and my business, et cetera. And that's the whole family, right? And um, you know, when I, when I really saw that, I was totally embarrassed about the fact that I've never, I've never, I've, yes, I've sent them birthday cards, et cetera. But how many you think that that particular client and his family deserve an incredible birthday gift? Or, or it doesn't have to be when they get there, but certainly when our clients are spending, whatever they're spending with us, you know, the fact that we're not sending our active clients like big hampers in the post for Christmas and, 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 and birthdays, it, it's, it's crazy town, right? And I know that I dropped the ball many times of that in, in my business. And we're spending, I'm spending 20, I'm spending, this was 20,000 pounds, I'm spending close to $30,000 in the next quarter in my business with all uh, getting, just cleaning up all our copy, cleaning up all our letters, cleaning up all those tough things. And I'm just going to give that to my inner circle group. Pretty cool, right? So anyway, let me talk about this. Next, inactive. So inactive has also got two segments, at least. You've got inactive, high spend, inactive, uh, not high spend, for instance. Okay. And then you've got prospects. These are people who are opting to stuff on your website, right? If, I, I've got a podcast. Uh, listen, there's one of my podcasts. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I just get free content there, and we're upping the game there all the time. But one of my podcasts, this is a true story. There's a podcast on there that describes how, what, like, the stuff you should do on your website. We have one of, uh, there's a gentleman that all he did was listen to my podcast and just copy every single thing I said in that podcast, and he tripled his new patients from his website. And that's all you ever do for me. It's free. Go grab it. You'll kill it. Okay. Prospects. These are people who have put up their hand, but not yet come in in any way, shape, or form. I'm just going to quickly mention GDPR. Yeah, those of you that are in Europe, you need to get permission to market to them after that, right? So let me go through it again. Active, inactive, prospects. Again, active, you've got, high, you've got different, even different groups inactive. High spend, active versus low spend active versus inactive, high spend, etc. So it's very different. So here's an example. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. If you, if you run a campaign, we may run a campaign in, in, in January. We may decide we're going to send emails, letters, whatever, to males and females. Okay, let me say this again. We may decide that people that enter the campaign have to have this criteria. Males, females, uh, at least had one adjustment. We may decide at least one adjustment. Older than 20 years of age, because you don't want to be sending, it's like a bit weird to be sending letters and stuff like that to uh, you know people, people who are like 12 years old and stuff, who haven't been in to see us for 12 weeks. So we will classify an inactive client as someone who hasn't been adjusted for three months, potentially. But that changes your practice might be different so you just decide what what is the definition of inactive also we might go back 18 months might go back so haven't been in for four for three months but um and has seen us in the last 18 months that might be crap. or we may say ever also big ninja tip if all you did was this, if all you did was this, I promise you right now this is worth six, I promise you right now just this one tip over time is worth six figures for you. If all you did every single campaign was the discipline of making sure you have a short list of your highest spends. So if all you ever did was just, because here's the thing about, I'm also gonna be careful to, there's, there's, there's the perfect world thing and then there's the achievable thing, right? Should we be sending, should we be, should we be, for instance, phoning every single client that's ever spent one thousand dollars with us. Totally, we should. But often, if I said to you, "What about your top hundred spends that fit that criteria, or top hundred most loyal clients?" Just go one step further, and everyone else is prepared to go for those top one hundred. That's just about achievable, right? You will kill it, kill it. That's all. You, by the way, 
this whole webinar, that's all you did, was you simply just went, hey, okay, cool. I'm gonna go, Ryan said, just go draw a list of the top spend inactive clients who hasn't seen this last three months, over 20 years of age, males, females, and get that list together and you put every single one of them. And crucially, this is where multi-step comes in. You need to phone them once you've sent emails and something in the post. Why? I'm definitely going at, going over, I'm definitely giving it to you guys too much now, but I'm giving it to you anyway. Is if you, the phone call starts with, hey, I'm just checking to see if you got our X, Y, or Z in the post. And that's the segue. Cool. So let's go through this. By the way, you guys finding this helpful? Give me a hands up if you find this helpful. Nink, Wesley, Vinny, Justin. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Good job, good job. So here's why the 80 20 rule is actually true. So the rule says that 20% of your net income or turnover will come from, oh, sorry, 80% of your net income or turnover will come from 20% uh, of your clients, right? And I know that we've all heard that. That's called Pareto's principle, that 80% comes from just 20%. Let's say 80% of your wealth generation comes from just 20% of effort. 80% of your income in your practice comes from 20% of clients. And you listen to me now, now, right now, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. No, nope, you don't get it. I went and analyzed my income. Um, we looked at 10 million, we just, Rounded at 10 million pounds worth of turnover. That was 10 million pounds in my business. I couldn't believe it. My jaw hit the floor when I saw the stat. Literally, it was between 20 and 30 percent. Uh, so 80 percent of the turnover came from between 20 and 30 percent of the clients ever. So that was 8 million pounds came from just like 20 to 30 percent of the clients. So here's my question: What are you doing for the top 20 percent? What are you doing for the top 20 inactive or active? At the end, I'm just going to give you, those of you on the webinar at the end, I'm just going to give you all of these so you can just copy and paste them. And I'm going to give you a little extra surprise at the end. But that's, that's all you get from me is, is, is doubling down on that, your highest spend and your top 20%. From an achievability perspective, you're going to get way more bang for your buck. Should you be doing it for the whole database? Totally, you should be. But if you hack this, that's, you're going to do great. Next, always multi-step, always multimedia. Meaning, never one and done always have multimedia so i will never do a campaign like this without going it needs to be email there needs to be some type of snail mail there needs to be a text there needs to be a phone call and there needs to be a facebook raise your hand right now on this email uh, it's very different for webinars but raise your hand right now if you receive either an email or a text or or you saw me on facebook in some way shape or form to be on this webinar raise your hand if you've got one of those three thank you thank you thank you thank you bob alex Vinny. Rolf, of course, I'll do like always, 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 as much as possible. That's always multi-step, right? Always multi-step, always multi-step. So next, Facebook. Now, this was, Facebook is, listen, let me, let me be clear. Facebook, the rules change not on a weekly basis, not on a monthly basis, on a daily basis. If you, I, I always say this, like, honestly, just pay to stay close to the energy so you can learn it or pay to someone to do it, but you should know what you're doing. First of all, that's the first thing you should do. You should know how to do it. So we just teach all our, all our inner circle members exactly what we do. And we just give our, our swap off. So here's some of my clients' results, right? All I'm trying to give you is awareness of what's possible. So you can do Facebook ad. This is a one-touch advert. It's called a carousel advert. This particular guy, he got um, one of my long-term clients. He got 40, 97 leads, 40 new patients booked in so far. That, oh, that, went, that, that campaign went way higher than that. But he spent about thousand dollars, and at that point, he had made close to ten thousand dollars just from that campaign. It's totally possible. You guys should be doing it. He has a different type of campaign. This is not trying to get new patients. Have a look. So all I'm trying to do is, if you look at the Facebook objective, those of you that are a little bit more clued up will know what I mean. I'm looking for views. Have a look there in this Facebook ad. This ran for this was a particular ad for yeah, go Merry Christmas. So we did a funny advert at the front desk, the background, that's Quentin, that's for my team members. We've got 132,000 views. Now, crucially, what can I do with those views? I can retarget them. So here's the second ad that they saw. Hey, uh, I shipped three, if you saw my last video, um, grab something. Here's another one. And that's, sorry, this was, that was this, this is a two-step one I'm teaching you. This is the Valentine's. This is the first video, and here's the second video. As I discussed in my previous video, you can grab it X, Y, and Z. Free limited availability for, I think it was an in-house posture screen or whatever it is. So that's when we get lots of traction. That is a retargeting ad. Uh, there's loads of other ads you can do. There's driving people to health classes. There's in-house screenings, etc. I'll teach you some of this now. But this is just to give you some examples. 
Yes, some of the results of the guys of separation during new patient avalanche or new patient leads. This was six as uh, 50 new patient leads in six hours. This was Danny got 40 to 50 leads from Facebook ads. This is all in our Facebook group. People are just posting their results uh, in four days. This is Carl. He got 21 new patients, 95,000 potential income for the year. This was another one of my inner circle members, 36 new patients, and he's only spent $50, 50 pounds. We got 36 new patients for that, leads. Uh, this is 18 new, sometimes there's a difference between a lead and a new patient, right? That's why I always like to just be careful when you see that stuff posted online. They're completely different things. Uh, and plus, I'm in the game, so I get it. Facebook app, we that, we've had 18 leads in 24 hours. Yes, Gerard, he had 29 leads in four days and 24 already booked. So 24 new patients booked in, the, in four days. So having said that, if I started all over again, this is the, probably the one that, if, I often get asked that question. If I started all over again, what would you do, Ryan? This is what I'd do, especially this time of the year. Especially this time of the year. If you're not doing this, you're losing, oh my word, you're leaving so much on, on the table. Talks and workshops are an absolute must, especially in January. So our registration rate goes through the roof this time of year. So what do I mean by that? So yeah, the, you should, there are three types. I haven't done a slide for this, so please write this down. There are three types of, of if you will, talks. There's an in-house kind of orientation class, if you will, and that is to increase your tension, increase referrals, all those, it's fantastic. You should all be doing that. Right, but that is in-house for current uh, and existing customers and clients and patients, and especially in the new in, in, within their journey, the new patients. I did a podcast once where I interviewed a whole bunch of famous docs and asked them what was the number one thing that grew the business, and that's what they said. Next, you should absolutely be doing workshops. This is a new skill set, but we absolutely kill it with this. Drive people from Facebook into your practice for an informational talk on whatever. I'll, I'll show you some results now. And the last part is this, you should absolutely be going to corporate environments and going to companies. If you're not going to companies, uh, it's, just, it's just insane. Why is it so insane? Because if they allow you in to go speak and traditionally called like a lunch and learn or et cetera, by the way, this is also another term, you, it's very much in the marketplace being termed at dinner with the doc. We don't, do, we don't put on food when they come to us and we still kill it. So just listen up. So here's the four elements. First, my, uh, oh, sorry, I was just finishing that story with why you should go into companies. The reason you should go into companies is because once you get in, you move from the you, you move from the unwanted pest to the invited guest. You move from the unwanted pest to the invited guest the minute you get invited into a company. Because uh, essentially, if HR or whoever's let you into the company to come do a talk, they also have to justify that decision and they will big you up. They will send the emails. They'll be so helpful. That's in my experience, right? Step number one, for an essential workshop, make sure you market the event and get registrants. You have to have the skill set to do that. If it's an in-house event, it's a team environment. It's not very dissimilar to a launch, like I just, uh, just explained to you. You must have the whole team behind you. If it's in a company, on New Patient Avalanche, we give you scripts and how to get them into companies. We show you how to search for them online and do all that stuff, right? And, but crucially, my favorite one, specifically if you're lazy, which sometimes lazy business is a good type of business, is I want to finish a shift adjusting. I just want to walk across to the room and I want to have like 20, 30. It doesn't mean if it's 10, it'd be amazing. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people in a room. If you did that for me, I always say this. If you did that for me on a weekly basis and someone was able to do that on a weekly basis, which we do, but if someone did that for me, I, I'll, take a bit, I'll take a practice from zero to 300 in literally weeks. Literally weeks, literally weeks. If you just put 20 people in the room for me every single week, that are coming to me, so I just walk across after a shift and do that. We'll show you how to do that now. Next, once they've got registered, you have to understand how to market the event or get in. But once you have got, got in or uh, got people to register, there's a completely different thing getting to them to show up. Please write this down. This is the only tip you get from this webinar. You'll kill it. Casualness leads to casualty. If you think to yourself, oh, I'm sure they'll come, you're going to get a big lesson, right? Casualness leads to casualty. Next, deliver the talk like a pro. We have templates for this. I'll show you how to do this. And step number four, get them to commit to pay for an initial examination on the night. And here is an example, right? So here's one of my inner circle members, the new patient avalanche, my two-day talks boot camp. We smashed the talk yesterday and we got 43 new patients. Then straight, and then they did their patient appreciation event straight afterwards. So this is, I want to show you how powerful this is. So on the day, on the day, every one of those people that decided to take an initial consultation paid 37 pounds in this case. And so there was 1,591 on the day. This is 47 pounds here, 
That's five, some of the dollars, by the way, I haven't put the right pounds in there, but 517 on the day. That's 11 new patients an hour, 10 new patients an hour, 400 a day, eight new patients an hour, 376. Why that's so important is because also you've got ad spend, eh, guys? Remember that. You're doing this on, ad, on Facebook. We never spend more than between $200 and $400. So if you look, you spend $200 and $400 and on the day, you're already able to return three, four, five times that. That's great business. That means you cash flow positive the whole time. You don't have uh, your velocity of return. If you haven't heard that term, you need to know it. Your velocity of return is very high. Okay, here we go. Facebook event part talk, 19 books, 16 showed up, um, 10 books, first two appointments. And what I say, not bad for an hour and a half work. Amazing, 10 new patients, eight new patients an hour. 103 new patients at a corporate talk. I was pissed off about this because this beat my record, right? My record in one talk is close to 70 new patients paid on the day. So 30 per person, 3,000 on the day. Uh, 10 new patients, 45 minutes. 21 tickets sold, 16 showed up. Rachel, this might even be yours, by the way. And uh, 21, 16 showed up, five existing patients. 11 new, new patients, 75% show up, 10 vouchers sold, 90% conversion in the room. Thank you, Ryan, my whole team. They make that on the day. 10 new patients, my fiber ultimate talk, etc. just on and on and on. This is what it looks like. Have a look, have a look. You can do this in any space. This is in a tiny reception. Like, this, we just do this over and over and over and over. Right, I have an online course for this. Check it out if you guys want it. It's 695. It's student, certainly worth it. I also run a two-day program where we help docs how to speak, how to fill the room. We go through marketing campaigns on the day. We just give you all the strategies. On the online version, you just get all the classes, you get everything you need to know, and you get the scripts for the talks, and you get the how to fill the room, and get them to show up, and you get all those email sequences, and we just up the game on the live version where you get to actually come and we teach you how to talk as well. So you have my dates. You might want to write some of these down. We've got Dallas coming up uh, in April. We've got Barcelona coming in June. We've got Newport Beach coming up in August, and we've got Windsor United, uh, United Kingdom coming up in September. So you might want to write those down. Just listen to this. Hi, I'm Wendy and I'm Rachel and we're from Very Chiropractic. We've just had an amazing like two days here with Ryan, learning about some like speaking and public work and doing workshops and all sorts of things. So it's been huge value and Ryan always gives great value, doesn't he? Oh, always, always, always. We've got so much stuff in from there. But um, we thought we'd tell you a little bit about how we've implemented stuff that we've learned previously. So far, I'm getting a bit of results, so I'll pass you over to Rachel. So we did the new patient at lunch, and we we worked with Jack and Dan, and one of the CAs of Ray Carroll, and they're absolutely amazing. They talked you through step by step how to do Facebook ads, how to set up the event right. It's just amazing. Our last in house screening, we had 120 sign ups, we had 46 people show up, and we had 48 people book on the day. So thank you, Ryan and your team. You're amazing. Thanks, Luke. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope it helps you grow your practice. My name is Ryan Ryder. I generate $7 million every single year from eight practices, 10,000 new patients last year alone. I've been doing this for the last 10 years. And if you enjoy this video and you enjoy my content, I highly recommend you grab my book. I put everything that I've learned in the last 10 years and $7 million every single year, 10,000 new patients in the book. Grab the book, click on the link below, it's completely free of charge. Uh, all you do is pay for the shipping, we pay for the book. Uh, enjoy the content, enjoy the rest of the videos, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope that 2020 and your practice grows more than you ever could have imagined, and I hope that the book's part of that journey. See you soon.